Manchester United took on Leicester yesterday and what should have been a tough game. And in my opinion, the first 30 minutes was 90% Leicester, you know, coming off the back end of Barcelona 2-2, apparently an incredible game. Obviously, I did not see it as I was in New York. Um, but what I've heard, wonders from Rashford and multiple other players, and obviously a lot end Old Trafford next uh, Thursday, whatever it may be. But yeah, Leicester, we, we should have been 2-3-4-0 down in that first 30 minutes. But what happened in that second half was incredible. You could see from the passing, the passion, the, the conversations happening on the pitch, you know, gone out should being subbed was one of the greatest things to happen. He... And I'll stand by this opinion, you know, he, he's young, he has a long way to go. He should never, ever start for United again until he understands how to play a different type of football. You know, yesterday I watched Gone Out show, he was doing one-dimensional things. People give Alanga shit, and he does nothing more than Alanga. Because he scores a couple of... Ex- Alanga scored a few fucking goals when he first started. But for me... He was being outpasted by their fullback. Luke Shaw was having to do more of a job. He was having to do both left back and a left wing job. He has no strength. He hasn't got anything to his game, in my opinion, that is any different from the other youngsters, Pelestri, Alanga, Chong, all these other players we've been dealing with. People see something gone out, show, and I absolutely do not see it. What I do see in gone out, show is, and if you have listened to all that and you'll listen to this, he is a brilliant impact player. He's a better impact player than Alanga, Pelestri, your other wingers that we've had come through. But Jaden Sanjo is better than Gone Out Show. The second he came on, the second the team was changed, the was going into Cam, Fernandez going into right, you know. Well, well Vegos went to striker eventually, and Sancho was playing in that Cam position. Rash was on the left. We destroyed Leicester. Leicester did not have any chances or possibilities of winning that second half because the team was in better shape. Fred was the other dreadful player yesterday. There's only gone out to Fred, who I'd say how was shit yesterday. And I mean shit, shit, shit. At the second McTominay came on, McTominay was so much better, more composed. And that is not me saying McTominay is a better football than Fred because Fred is fantastic on his day. But again, McTominay, he was better yesterday. And not, in, in, the second he came on to the second the game finished, he made no errors. Get overcomplicated. Fred's passing was poor the entire game. But again, Bruno, his passing was dreadful for the entire game. But he pulled off a couple of good passes that allowed us to win the game. That is the difference between Fred and Bruno. Bruno can make a hundred bad passes, but he'll pull two off that'll win you the game. Fred did get an assist, I believe. But he still was absolutely shite. And that's the thing, he's a better player when Cassie's playing. Subitza was a workhorse in that midfield. And the day I get to see himself, Ericsson, Cassie in that midfield with Bruno Rashford and that donkey up front, it's going to be great. Veghorst is a waste, waste of time in that striker role. He's a brilliant and uh, he's a good, good player as a as a 10, as a cam player, you know, but for me, he is a shit footballer, you know, I don't care how many times you can hold the ball up, he fails to win headers, he fails to put the ball in the net, he fails to get in the right positions, he's slow, sluggish, he's a Sunday league football. you know, people call McTominay shit, McTominay at least can do his role to a standard that I'd allow to say he could play in lower level Premier League, high level championship, he could play in Europe somewhere, Weghorst couldn't even make it to the Burnley team, some of the passes, even when Masaka was putting in when he came on, he just couldn't keep up with the pace. He is shite. I'm sorry. I don't care if you can say, oh, he held the ball. Fucking who gives a shit? Put McTominay, put Fred, put Garnaltra, put Alanga, put Pelistri, put Sancho, put any of the other players in that position that could do the role. Veghus has come into this team to deliver goals, and Rashford has managed to get every single fucking goal since coming into this team. It is laughable, it is embarrassing. Veghus, <clears throat> I just don't understand. He is just a lump of log who sits up front. And, you know, I have to just say the worst three players yesterday were himself, Fred and Garnaccio, but Veghorst was brilliant in that midfield. It's just baffling. You put him in that strike role, he's shit. You put him in that 10 role, he's a different player. And, you know, he's no player that should ever return to Man United. The second that loan ends, he should fuck off and we should get someone world class in. Because that's what we're missing. Yes, they could have ended 6-7-0 had Vegos not stayed in for the entire game. It's that sort of level that United are missing. And, you know, Rashford is going to get burned out at some point. So it's up to the other players to step up. We know Sancho got a goal at two assists for Bruno yesterday. 
but that's but your wingers in the olden day were never designed to score as many as this. You have to have the clinical striker. And if we can go into next season with Sancho, Rashford and, you know, Harry Kane's, I'll stand by it. It should be Harry Kane next season, not Ozerman, because Ozerman is brilliant at what he's doing for Napoli. But again, it's Napoli. I, I mean, yeah, they're 18 points clear. It's never happened like this before. But it's a different type of league. And I, I if you're going to be spending the exact same money on him or Kane, it's no brainer to be Kane because you're going to get at least three, four years out of Kane, in which, in that time, you can nourish someone else who is younger. And I just don't think Osman's the right pick. Kane would fit into this team so perfectly because he would. He, he's a simple player, to Vegas, if you will, but he's a bit more pace, he's a bit more intelligence, he has a bit more everything that Vegas should have, but he doesn't have. And obviously, you see his goal scoring record as well. <clears throat> So, but yeah, in regards to player builds yesterday, Martinez was was good. You know, Lindelof was good. Shaw was fantastic. Him or Sabitzer deserved man of the match. Dalot was great. Wan Saka was great. Fred, as I said, poor. Gone out shot poor. Um, Tomine was great. Um, Bruno, Sancho, Rashford, they were all great. Uh, Alanga, piece of shit. Yeah, you, it, uh, the fact that he gets away with playing professional football is laughable. Um. It's a joke at times, but I think the way he balanced the team yesterday, the fact that we won 3 0, we got a clean sheet. David De Gea made two world class saves. Fantastic. You know, I've got to praise, you know, Barnes and Madison, Ian Axio, uh, Tete, their forward players are on a different level. They are, uh, in the sense of what this left the team offers, their front players are fantastic, but defensively, they're shit. Um, <clears throat> like, Rash was second goal. What was the keeper doing? What was um, Ward doing? You've got to be like, he sort of like just jumped forward and Rashford just played it around his body. You know, credit to what Rashford does and the positions he gets in, but he did not deserve player of the match yesterday. He scored two great goals, but it had to, if you look at the things, Bruno, who made the plays, Sabitzer held up the ball in the middle and actually kept us in the game. You know, Luke Shaw, who was going in the middle, down the left, through the centre, he was doing absolutely everything. The fact that Ra the man of the match award has lost all meaning. Yeah, people said, oh, Rush was the reason we won. Oop. Yes, but it's all the other stuff. Without Fred's passing to Rashford, without Bruno's pass to Sanjo, without Shaw's hold-up play, without Zabitz's engine, <laughs> none of that happens. Without David De Gea's world-class saves, none of it happens. Because if those goals go in, if the shitter keepers in net, then you are losing the game. Because I, I've got to admit, we should have lost yesterday in the first half. But Leicester just didn't put their chances away. And it's not just that. David De Gea was on a different level. You know, he had nothing to do in the second half. But it's because of what he did in the first half. It gave United the engine to go in the second half after a 1-0 lead. So you pump the goals past them. That's the difference between United from last season, or season before, or season before that, to this season. It's not about the different players. Like McTominay's playing different. Fred's playing different. Lindor's playing different. Maguire's playing different. You can call them shit. You can call them whatever. They still need to leave end of the season. But they're still performing at a high standard that we have never seen them play at. You know, when Lindelof's on the pitch, he's more composed, he picks out the better passes. You know, it goes to show yesterday, though, that Varane is our best defender. He just is. Martinez was having issues. He got skinned on one of the shots where Barnes went past him. And it goes to show, you can praise Martinez all you want, but Varane is the best centre-back United has had since Ferdinand. It's not even close. It's not up for debate. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, I think Luke Shaw is probably one of our greatest fullbacks ever. Um it will always be different because he always played different to Evra, but I think what he brings to the team, the fact he's got confidence and he's, his uh, composure is just brilliant. I just thought yesterday we saw some brilliant passing, some brilliant quick football, some brilliant thinking, and just a lot of absolute brilliance. And, you know, credit to Leicester, you know, they're, they're still trying, they're still doing it, trying to do things. But ultimately, a great result. Can't wait to watch Barcelona and obviously a League Cup final on the weekend, which is going to be a very difficult game. Both games are going to be difficult. If we want to stay in Europa League, we have to score more than Barcelona, clearly, or win on penalties. And Newcastle is going to be the hardest game of the season because it's our first Cup final since 2020. Anyone who thinks it's going to be easy just because Pope is out is naive and blind. But of course, it's still going to be easier. But obviously, they still have one of the strongest defences in the league with clinical forwards in Isaac, Wilson, St. Maximum, Almiron, and the rest of them. So I'm intrigued, I'm excited. 
And obviously, I can't wait to see what happens in the Man United, Leicester, uh, Man United, Newcastle, and Man United Barcelona games. So stick around for those reviews and previews. And of course, if you want to see anything else on the channel, let me know down below, of course. And I'll see you next one. Goodbye. Thank you.